I tried to think of some personal examples of people that were betrayed by their families and were able to overcome. And I want to share two as we think about the story of Joseph. A name that we all know, Oprah Winfrey, she was, as you, look, as you read her biography, she was repeatedly molested by her cousin, her uncle, and by family friends. She was raised in Kosciuszko, Mississippi, later moved to the Northeast. And she ran from home at age 14 years of age when she gave birth to a baby boy who died shortly after. You think about that kind of start, just being molested in family by your uncle, by your family friend, and, and most repeatedly by her cousin. We all know that she became the first black woman billionaire. What we may not know, or some of you may not know, that her name, Oprah, was taken from biblical character in the book of Ruth. Later, the name was changed in the spelling just a bit. Her nickname as a child was Preacher because she could recite Bible verses taught to her by her grandmother. So her grandmother built this dream into her as she was repeatedly raped and molested as a young person. Because her dream drove her and she would not, she would not be controlled by the circumstances in the situation just like Joseph, at 17, she was named Miss Black Tennessee, even though three years earlier we are aware of her situation. She wore dresses made of potato sacks to school because of poverty in her life. By 19 years of age, she was a news anchor, and recently she was named the most influential woman in the world. And as you read through her life and her, her biblical foundation in her life and her background, over and over what you hear and what you see is that God gave me a dream to fulfill my destiny. And I would never give up on my God-sized dream. Others, I'm sure, that faced similar experiences ended up with different outcomes. And then the second example that I would share of, of betrayal by family and so much to overcome in this particular age range as Joseph's at 17, uh, Oprah is at 14. This one is actually at 16. He was born Emmett Perry Jr. And as a child he was unbelievably physically abused by his father not once but over and over and over as he dealt with that in his family from his father his biography records that on several occasions he could not take it anymore and he had several failed suicide attempts as a young person his mother was his only comfort and when he turned 16, as we think about 14s and 16s and Joseph's 17s, when he turned 16, he so was so, had been so abused, he changed his name to Tyler to protect himself from his father. Abused in the family. He dropped out of high school because of all the abuse that he had taken, and he later earned his GED. But one day, one day while watching Oprah Winfrey on television, Tyler sat in his house in Atlanta and he heard Oprah say that writing can help overcome depression and provide strength. And so on that day, he began writing letters addressed to himself which became the basis for the musical, I Know I Have Been Changed. In 2011, he was the highest earning person in entertainment business, Tyler Perry's House of Pain. 
if you read his biography, then over and over this same language that you find in Oprah's life, you will find in Tyler's life, and you will find in Joseph's life. Because each of them will say, regardless of what happens to me, God has given me a dream, and I know that I will be able to fulfill my destiny. Joseph's name actually means, may God increase. As we heard in the passage that was read, he was the 11th son of Jacob's. He was the firstborn, though, to Rachel. And Jacob was 90 when Joseph was born. And he became the favorite son to Jacob's favorite wife. But oh, what a legacy. The grandson of Isaac. The great, great grandson of Abraham. And he was a dreamer of dreams. Thirteen chapters of Genesis are dedicated to this young man. He spent 13 years as a slave and a prisoner in Egypt, and then 80 years as a ruler. And Joseph's story reveals that even though we cannot control circumstance, we can control how we respond to the circumstances. You never hear him complaining. You never hear him whining. You never hear him making excuses because he's chasing the dream that God gave him. Joseph was destined for great power. He was destined to be a great uh, instrument of God's deliverance. <coughs> Excuse me. But at 17, he, rece he received this picture. And it would be my prayer for those nine that sang earlier today and for every young person that is sitting in this audience today, including my grandchildren today, that God would give each a dream that would drive their lives. Amen? And that regardless of what they faced, that even though the applause of the church as they completed their singing today is very important for young people, as we as the church of Jesus Christ affirm them in their lives. But I pray for each of those nine today that as they sang and for all those in our midst, that what they would seek not only would be the applause of men, but the applause of the nail-scarred hands of Jesus. Amen? That they would each have dreams that would drive them, that they would not be controlled by their circumstances, but that they would always keep the dream alive. And so Joseph was that. But he had to pass some tests along the way because he did some dumb things. He wasn't, he wasn't perfect. You'll notice in the passage that was read, he had this problem because he was the favorite that he would snitch on his brothers. That's a good way to, to uh, endure some abuse in the family, amen? And for every young person here, every young person here, I would take the advice and the lessons learned from Joseph. Don't, don't be a snitch on your brothers and sisters, amen? Because in being a snitch on your brothers and sisters will always cause you pain. If not now, it will later. It cost Joseph 13 years. 13 years of pain. But behind that was this insecurity in Joseph. He had God's favor on his life, but he was always trying to make himself look better than his brother's. And so what I want to share with you today is just as we're fully aware of time is that he, would, had to, he eventually had to deal with this area of pride. You know the person that's always trying to, to, to drop names, the person that's always trying to make themselves look better by where they've, where they've been and what they've done. 
And in this lesson of Joseph, we find ourselves that until we can be totally secure in who we are in Christ and whose we are, then we can't handle what God has for us in the future. Henry Blackaby would say it this way, we have to develop character to match the assignment that God gives us. And so, I would say to you today that if your dream for every young person that can hear my voice and every person here, if your dream doesn't scare you, it is way too small. Amen? Because we know that it is a God-sized dream. As I think about those nine young people today, you know, is there a Bill Gates in the group? Is there a Stephen King? Who is there that could impact Laurel County, the Commonwealth of Kentucky, beyond the nation and the world for Christ? So I challenge you today to be a line chaser. Because wherever you put Joseph, the, the cream always rises to the what? It always rises to the top in Joseph's life. That you can throw him in jail, you can throw him in jail, you can have him doing menial things, but he's always going to work hard, he's always going to serve others, and he's always going to do it for the right reasons. So to be a lion chaser today, quit living as if the purpose of your life is to arrive safely at death. Run to the roar. Set God-sized goals. Pursue God-given passions. Go after a dream, young people, that is destined to fail without divine intervention. Stop pointing out problems of others. Become part of the solution. Stop repeating the past. Start creating the future. Fight for your dreams. Don't give up. Grab opportunity and don't let go. Live like today is the first day and the last day of your life. Burn bridges that hold you back. Blaze new trails. Live for the applause of the nail-scarred hands of Jesus. Don't let what's wrong with you keep you from worshiping what's right with God. Dare to fail. Dare to be different. Quit holding back and taking the safe route. Quit running away. And I say these words for my grandchildren today, for this choir, for this congregation. Be a God chaser. Be a God chaser. Not a people pleaser. But chase after the things of God. Because God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His plans are better than your plans. He has a dream for you, and it is better than you, your dream. You can't dream a bigger dream than God can dream. Because God has assigned destiny for each one of us. Don't let people pour cold water on your dream that God has given you. Oprah didn't. Tyler Perry didn't. Bill Gates didn't. Michael Jordan didn't. Like Joseph, we are, dressed, we are destined for great power and great influence. But we will have to pass great tests to achieve the destiny of God. Like I said earlier, before the dream, Joseph brought a negative report about his about his brothers. And this is an area of his life that God had to shape and mold before he could ever accomplish his destiny. And Joseph failed that first test by being a snitch on his own brothers. But we realize that failure is never final and some of our, our greatest tests are hard lessons learned. But we have to be reminded that being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in us will carry it always to completion. God has big dreams for us all, and he will persevere as he seeks to get, 
get anything out of the way that stands in the way. Oprah's big dream for her life was not to be the wealthiest African-American woman in the world. Oprah's big dream in life was that she might be able to be so blessed financially that she could help young women like herself that found their situ- themselves in the same situation that she found herself in. And that because of her resources and because of God's dream in her life. And because of her future, she could help them out of their situation. Amen? And Tyler Perry's great dream was not to be the one that made the most money of any entertainer in the world. His dream that was, would be that he would have the resources to help young men that were being beaten and abused by their own father. That they would never give up hope that they would choose not to take their lives like he chose several times and God granted him life out of those failed attempts. But he had a dream that God would would use his skills and his abilities in an incredible way so that he could be a help to others. Bill Gates never dreamed that he would be the wealthiest man on the world. All he wanted to do was to use his intellect and his ability and his gifts so that he could give back to the world. Listen, guys, chasing God-sized dreams is very, very important because our world needs these nine and these young people here today to be God-chasers, not people-pleasers. Amen, church? We need to know, and Joseph had to learn that It was not about pleasing his daddy that was most important. It was about pleasing his heavenly father that was most important. He had to learn that he couldn't quit be that he had to quit being a snitch to his brother about his brothers. And we have to realize today that if we're going to fulfill God's destiny for our lives, that we've got to quit comparing ourselves to everybody else and realize that our final analysis is to please the one who saved us, and his name is Jesus. Amen? Our identity is in Christ. We have resumes, and we have resources, but our identity in total security is in Christ. We are born-again believers. We are blood-washed sons and daughters of the King. That is our true identity. First, we must know who we are and whose we are. We are children of the King, beloved and cherished by the mighty sovereign creator of the universe. God's love is all that I need. I am part of His forever family. And that is the security that we need. It is easy to be secure when we know our Heavenly Father loves us and we are adopted into His forever family. And so let me close with just some characteristics in Joseph's life that helped him it helped him pursue this destiny. He never lost sight of the God-sized dream. He was a God chaser. You could put him in every situation and he would rise to the top. He didn't sit around and whine and complain. He learned not to compare himself with others and even his own brothers. And so whatever situation he was in, we can learn from him as I close. He accepted every situation that he was in. He learned to accept it and do the best that he could in that situation. Maybe... Today, he wouldn't have gotten the position that he wanted on a certain team. Maybe he wouldn't have gotten the promotions as people were promoted around him. But we see in the character of Joseph that whatever situation came his way, he did his best in that situation. He just kept his eyes on that dream that God had given him, and he was not going to lose sight of it. And so he accepted every situation. He didn't whine around and say, well, everybody's getting the gold mine and I'm getting the what? I'm getting the shaft. 
He didn't whine around. He didn't complain around. He kept his focus where it needs to be because he knew that if God gave him a destiny, that one day God would complete that destiny in him and that he was not going to give up. He was not going to give out. He was not going to turn his back on that, but that he was going to pursue the things of God. And I want you to know, based on the authority of God's Word, that it always works out when we try to complete the destiny of God. And so he accepted every situation. He never, he never got to a point where people were going by him. You don't hear him talking in, in those 13 chapters about, here, I'm stuck in here, I'm stuck in here, and everybody else, my peers, are going by me. We've got a millennial here, 17 to 30. Secondly, he believed in hard work. And boy, if there's a message that we need out in America today, especially for the millennial generation, is they need to believe in hard work. Amen? Here's a great example of a biblical character that believed in hard work. He never one time undermined those who enslaved him. He actually helped them to prosper because his attitude was, how can I help you be successful? Not what can you do for me. But if you don't work hard through your adversity, others may never see your true abilities. I always look for people. I always look for people's reaction when they don't get the promotion because that reveals a lot about their character. I always look for people at school, students that don't get the award, and I see how it affects them. Do they whine and complain? Or do they just keep on keeping on knowing that God's got a great plan and a great dream for him? So he accepted the situations. He was willing to work hard regardless of who got the credit for it. Joseph also showed great patience as we finish up. He knew the Lord would bless him because of his dreams. And he endured with patience, knowing surely that the blessing would come. After interpreting the dreams, as we read further in Genesis of the baker and the butler, he asked the butler to tell the Pharaoh of his predicament. But even though he didn't get a quick response, he continued to work hard in the prison, trusting the Lord's timetable, because he would remember the blessings of the Lord. The fourth characteristic in Joseph's life as we finish up is integrity. He is true to his moral code, even though no one is around. He is true to himself. The fifth characteristic in Joseph's life as he pursued this destiny that for 80 years he becomes a leader after 13 years in, in prison was humility. When Joseph is called to interpret Pharaoh's dream, he could have taken credit for the great gift he had in interpreting dreams, but instead he immediately gives credit to the Lord because Joseph learned from his adversities that it was the Lord blessing him, that it was God's favor on his life, that he could not whip it up himself, and that the reason that he continued to rise to the top was nothing of his own ability but it was God's hand on his life, God's favor on his life. And Joseph's life just continued to bless others. He could have had a vengeful reaction to those who had wronged him. He could have withheld his gifts from his family, but he uses them to bless others. Have you ever noticed how people that have been hurt hurt other people? That wasn't in Joseph's DNA at all. He had been hurt, but he never hurt other people. It's so sad that we develop patterns that hurt people, hurt others. So Joseph was so different. Even though he experienced hurt, he never hurt others. And then lastly, as I finish, this is an incredible story as we look into the life of Joseph. When Joseph revealed his identity to his brothers... And now listen to me as I close. This is a word for First Baptist Church of London today on forgiveness. When Joseph revealed his identity to his brothers, 
he told them, don't be angry with yourselves that you sold me into slavery because God sent me before you to preserve life. He said, don't be angry with yourselves that you betrayed me. Don't be angry with yourselves that you sold me into slavery. Because God used all of that for his plan and his purposes. First Baptist Church of London, Kentucky could use a good dose of that as we move forward together and all God's people said. He knew his adversity had been a part of the bigger picture and he forgave them freely. And when you forgive, we let go of bitterness that keep, can keep us from progressing. So I'd ask you today as I close, what about the dream in your life? What about your destiny? Have you just settled for getting by because it got a little difficult? One of the things that breaks my heart as I close is to see, to see young people at Campbellsville University where I serve and work that are given so much by parents to put them in a position to chase big God-sized dreams and they do so little with what God has given them. They just continue to slack and take the easy way and figure out a way to get by and then many of those young people end up moving back into their homes of their, their parents and stay till they're 35 and 40 and 45 years of age with most of those not having any work to do at all. And then I see these young people at Campbellsville University that were given nothing, absolutely nothing, many abused by their families, no resources, no help, no encouragement. And they have a smile on their faces every day and, and they're chasing a God-sized dream and, and pursuing His destiny. And they're not willing to take any excuse at all. So my challenge today here in this room is that if you've been given much, take all that you've been given and use it forward for God's glory. Don't waste it. And that if you've been given nothing, as Oprah and Tyler Perry were, all you need is a big God who has awesome promises. And He has a bright future for you, even though you didn't get to choose your parents. And you didn't get to choose the kind of environment that you were raised in. With God is all you need. All things are possible with Him. Oprah and Tyler Perry are great examples of the goodness of God. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, as we close now in this moment, we've looked into the life of Joseph and the tests he had to pay, pass about pride before he could fill his destiny. And Lord, we find ourselves even here now with tests that we need to pass to move to the point of where you need us to be as a church body for a bright future. I pray for every per young person in this room that right now as we close, that you would raise up a God-sized dream in their hearts that will never, ever go away. And that they will never be satisfied in life with anything but chasing that dream. Because that one day, that dream will be realized in their lives. Remind us today that it's not what happens to us that's most important. It's how we respond to what happens to us. I pray today that in this room as we leave, that there would be God chasers with young people and parents and all ages and not people pleasers. I pray in this room there would be line chasers that would run to the opportunities rather than run away. And I pray, Lord, that we would claim the verse that he that began a good work in us will carry it to completion. Lord, if there are decisions that need to be shared today, people to receive your good news of Jesus, today is the day of salvation. If others in their pew are on the way home, 
they re, they've been reminded of a dream that you gave them 20 years ago that they placed on the shelf. I pray today before they go that dream would come alive. There is work to be done. In the strong name of Jesus, I pray. And everyone said, would you please stand?